What is up, party people? It's Brad Large. I'm back with you again for a special election video. And I want to put this out there because a lot of people are already getting in the right mindset with this. They're making sure that Christians out there remember that Christ is king, that Christ is Lord over all. Every square inch of this entire process, whatever happens this election season, God is in control of it. So we can trust in that. And it can also be uh, a little bit daunting and exciting to think that we will actually find out what God has in store for America, whether he is going to give us a season of grace or if he's going to give us a season of discipline and maybe even, uh, I don't know if punishment is the right word, but uh, what we deserve, right, as a nation, if we continue down a godless path. And in light of this, I saw Alan Leichtman uh, I think I said his name right. He has the 13 keys to the White House. And I saw his prediction for Harris and I looked at his keys because I generally agree that this is a pretty good predictive model and it has been time tested uh, and he had to adjust for the popular vote in there. But I think that there are many of the keys have to be interpreted with the right perspective. And you know me. Uh, hopefully, that I think that the right perspective is a biblical perspective that we should understand to be true to reality, to how God created things, and not with our human narratives of those things. And I think Alan Leichtman actually drank a little bit too much of his Kool-Aid uh, over there at Harvard. Um, and so with that, what this video is going to do is I'm going to talk about Alan's keys to the White House. I'm going to give the key, I'm going to give his take on it, and I'm going to give my interpretation of that. All right? So key number one is that the incumbent has more seats, uh, the incumbent party has more seats after the midterm election. Well, this is demonstrably untrue. Uh, it is demonstrably false. The Democratic Party did not gain seats in the midterm election. So that being objectively false, that's an easy one. There are several of the keys that are objectively true or false. They're very easy to interpret. Key number two, there's no serious contest for the nomination in the incumbent party. So Alan put this as a true. And um, I also would say this is objectively true. Uh, within the Democratic Party, there was no serious contest, even though the way that they... Um, appointed Kamala was not uh, by their own process, it seems, it's still, it, there was no serious contest for that. I think that one's easy enough to put as objectively true. Key number three is that the incumbent is the candidate. And this is again, objectively false. So far, so good. It's pretty easy so far. These are all objectively false things and we're getting them out of the way. Now, what you need to keep in mind with this prediction system is that if you get to six falses, that that flips the predictive model and that says that the incumbent is going to, the incumbent party is going to lose. So if there are more trues than falses, then we're all good. But so far, we've got a few falses that are kind of working against Kamala uh, in this scenario. So key number four is where it starts to get dicey. Key number four means there's no significant third party challenge. So Alan put this as a true. He said that there are no significant third party challengers. RFK has, uh, Junior has dropped out of the race. Um, and, but I think it's a little bit more complicated than that because RFK Junior was a very significant third party challenge to Kamala early on and has since backed Trump. In fact, they are uh, seeming to be very good friends at this point. So while Alan put this as a true, I think that this is at best uh, very subjective as to how you feel about it. And I would actually put this as a false. I would say that there was a significant party challenge, but it's even rolled up and it's even a worse scenario than this key would lead us to believe because he's actually backing uh, Trump in this scenario. Key number five is a doozy. This is uh, the short-term economy is better. Uh, Alan actually put that the short-term economy is better now than it was before. He put this as true, okay? The next, the next key, key number six, is on the long-term econ economy, and Alan also has this as true. So the outlook on the long-term and short-term economy, uh, Alan says that the short-term and long-term economy are in better shape and headed in a good direction. I think that's insane when you talk to any American out there. If you're looking at the people that are pushing propaganda about the economy, even the jobs report that just came out, 
I would like to see Alan Leichtman come out and say that maybe his opinion on these has changed because the short-term economy, the jobs that were lost, uh, only gaining 12,000 jobs, the economy, if you talk to anybody in this country, the economy's in a bad spot. So I put both of these as false. This is obviously not spelling good news for the Kamala campaign in my estimation. Number seven is there's a major changes to national policy. Again, this is objectively true. This is an easy one. Did they change the national policy? Yes, they did. They changed it so much that the majority of Americans say that they do not like the direction that this country's headed. To me, that spells disaster for the incumbent party. So key number eight is about sustained social unrest. So it says that, that the current period, the current incumbent parties. Uh, administration has not had serious or sustained social unrest. Again, Allen says that the current administration has not seen sustained social unrest. Well, I think that the majority of the uh, people in the country would say that actually we're more divided than ever, that there's been considerable social unrest in pockets and against certain conservative groups. Um, so I would actually put this as a false. Even though we didn't have riots like we had previously, I do not think that we have had a, um, a, a period of flourishing socially over this presidency. Number nine is there's no major scandal for the current administration. So the current administration has not had any major scandals. And Allen, again, says this is true. Now, I want to point out something that Allen uh, is a Harvard guy. He's out there in a very liberal area. He seems to be going based off of what a lot of liberal and mainstream media are saying about this. But I think this highlights the insane disconnect between liberal media, uh, mainstream media, and the vast majority of people's opinions in this country. Uh, no major scandal. The Hunter Biden laptop situation uh, alone is one. And the fact that this current administration has taken uh, unknown sums of money from foreign interests is a huge scandal. Just because the media is covering up, uh, that is a disconnect. And if we have a biblical worldview, we want to know it's actually true, not just what propaganda machines are telling us is true. Again, social unrest and these issues of scandal, it doesn't take a majority of the country to think these things um, for it to be true or not. In fact, public consensus on these things really doesn't matter. It's facts of the matter. Was there some kind of scandal? There were scandals against this administration. Just because the media thinks they were handled appropriately or downplayed enough doesn't make them go away. There were administrative uh, scandals in this administration. As far as social unrest, I mean, we had January 6th, uh, which no matter how you feel about it, caused a considerable amount of social unrest and people having opinions about that. Uh, whether you think that the United States government is holding political prisoners by detaining the January 6th people, or if you think that the greatest threat to democracy we've seen in a long time, that's still social unrest. And that happened not during Trump's presidency, but during the current administration's presidency. So the next ones have to do with the military. There haven't been a significant foreign military failure. So Alan put this as false. He said this leans false. So good on him for at least being able to admit that the Biden administration's handling of Af Afghanistan and possibly Ukraine could, have, could be perceived negatively. But the next one is, has there been a significant military success? Alan actually put this as true. And again, uh, I would disagree. Based on the Ukrainian conflict, Alan says that uh, Biden prevented some uh, massive in, uh, invasion from or from Russia completely taking over Ukraine. That could be perceived uh, either way, I think. Uh, this could be a toss-up, depending on your perspective on it, but I would not call uh, what has been happening in foreign affairs uh, overall uh, 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 any kind of success. And I think that because of that, I would put this one as false. So the last two keys of this puzzle are keys 12 and 13. And these, this, this is really the funniest part to me because these are about the charisma of the candidates, the charisma of Kamala Harris and the charisma of Donald Trump. And in all, uh, I, I kind of have to, in one sense, I'm glad that um, Alan at this point says Kamala is not a very likable candidate. He admits that. He says that she is not a national hero. She is not very charismatic. Good on you for being able to admit that. On the other hand, 
he also has this that the in, the um, challenging party, Donald Trump, is not very charismatic. So he put it as true that the challenging party does not have a very charismatic candidate. I think he could not be more wrong about that. In 2016, I, I did not like Donald Trump. I did not like him as a person. I didn't really love him as a candidate. I didn't know what to do with my vote. However, now he has turned many people who said they would never vote for him into avid supporters. He got, he got the nomination of Joe Rogan who I believe said he would never have him on his show because he was too divisive, too out there. He didn't want to platform him. I believe that years ago, Joe Rogan said that. Maybe during the COVID time frame even, even up through all of that. But Joe Rogan came out and endorsed him. Elon Musk, who is, has come out and supported him wholeheartedly. The nation has, uh, he has a very charismatic personality that has attracted people who look at the alternative and then start looking into Trump, he has turned people who said they would never vote for him into voters of him. You cannot do that if you are not charismatic. So just to recap, I think Alan Leitzman's uh, prediction model is accurate. I honestly think Alan has been drinking a little bit too much of the Kool-Aid, and I think it shows the disconnect between the reality of everyday Americans and mainstream media. And as Christians, we need to look at, you know, our day-to-day -day lives more than anything, actually. So as we look at this election, even if Alan's right and Harris becomes a president, or if I'm right and he's misinterpreting his keys, we do need to keep an eternal perspective on this. We do need to find ways to love our neighbors and love our enemies. We're actually called to do that. And if we get Trump, I believe that... Uh, our nation will see a period of grace where we will not be as persecuted as we would be under the Harris uh, administration. And I think that that is a huge gift, but that's when the work actually starts. We need to pray for those who are persecuting us. We need to evangelize people. We need to let them know the good news. We need to change hearts. We need to uh, do everything we can to influence people to turn to Jesus and not political solutions. So I didn't want to get too political uh, with my channel, I tried to be clear about things, but not, you know, overtly political or whatever. And if I didn't think that this was actually uh, a clear spiritual issue because um, the Democratic Party has just set themselves up completely opposed to Christianity, completely opposed to life, completely opposed to sanity, then I don't think it would be a clear cut choice. I think that there are lots of uh, liberal people out there that are not necessarily progressive, that are not our enemies on this. And I think that it's a, an unfortunate thing that our country is so divided over this. And so I think as Christians, we need to be that salt and light and show what those relationships could look like, even if we disagree. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. I hope this was kind of an interesting video. Let me know below what you think about the keys. Uh, if you think uh, Harris Trump thing is going to play out, if it's going to be divided either way, let me know what you think. And, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to making some videos in the near future, I hope. And um, But I wanted to put this out there and just tell you guys I'm still praying for you. I'm still thinking about what uh, future steps I'm going to take to continue um, to try to be uh, positive, to try to develop a positive ministry for, for glorifying God. And um, uh, anyway, so I will catch you soon. Peace.